are these people? If you don't like the platform that we are currently on YouTube, which likes to censor and demonetize people, um, well, guess what, Colin? Google also likes to fire people, wouldn't you know? Um, so we, we're going to be talking about school protesters later in the evening in a clip that will most likely be on this channel right after this one. So, but I wanted to get into this a bit. So did you, you hear about this at all? Um, I think so. Okay. So I think, did I send this story to you? Maybe. Uh, there's a couple I, of I them feel that... like, well, this was the first year. I feel like, we might have looked at this, something similar to this maybe yep. a few weeks ago. Uh, I'm about to get well, to we didn't it. Report so, on it. So Google, this is in sheer post. This is by Muhammad Katami, Zelda Montes, great first name, and Kate Sim. Uh, that's what Robin Williams named his kid, by the way, was yes. Zelda. Um, big Zelda. fan. Also, Robin Williams played Counter-Strike. We're going to you, bro. Want a 1v1 dust? I'm down. I'm so down. Um, that sounds like so much fun to play that with Robert Williams. Uh, anyway, um, so sheer posts. They're they're talking about how Google fired these people for protesting its complicity in the war on Gaza, but we won't be silenced. So this is from them, right? We like to showcase the actual protesters and is right. So. Um, first off, this is, this is what you were talking about. This is, um, yeah. and I, I forget his name, uh, Jake Benedict, right? Jack. So, yes. Um, this was part of a, so they were contracted to work for Google through the YouTube music program, right? They tried to form a union. Right, along with other Google right. YouTube music people, right, mm -hmm. and then Google just fired their uh, fired. right, not just them, fired the entire contract because because they weren't employed by them. It's like Google is not employed by them, so they can just be like, "Well, fuck you! I don't got to pay for your shit." Right. So that's what happened. And, and bargain in right. good faith. The moment it happened. There are less than 50 of us at YouTube Music, and we're taking two of the largest corporations in the world. So to be supported by the city of Austin, and also our allies in the labor community, give us the motivation to keep this fight Not going. Not to interrupt, but they just laid us all off. Oh. Yeah, they, they just laid us all off. We just all, I our, guess we just all Our jobs are ended today, effective immediately. Wow. Um... I'm sorry your time's expired, but we'll we'll follow up on this. Thank you. I mean Damn. You're fired. Like <laughs> Yeah. You're fired. Like during the thing. Like that's pretty fucked up. I, I don't know about you, but you know. Um so I wanted to bring that to uh, it's not the only place, but this was in the video, the testimony, uh, Jack Benedict spoke of the unionization efforts, explaining that a group of less than 50 was determined to fight two of the target largest corporations in the world, Google and its subtractor, Cognizant, right? So during the speech, another employee approaches and says they just laid us all off. Our jobs are ended today, effective immediately. Benedict, visibly shocked, responds, wow, and they leave the podium. Uh... This all comes in light of a year-long fight after a group of 58 employees on the YouTube, mu YouTube music content operations team unanimously voted to unionize as part of the Alphabet Workers Union last spring in an election overseen by the NLRB. For a press release by Austin City Council members, employees spoke of the need for better pay, benefits, and more flexible return to office policy. The news of Google laying off YouTube music team broke before the results of an Austin City Council vote on a resolution calling for Google and Cognizant to negotiate with the YouTube music content operations team. The resolution passed 9-1. to one. While workers were at City Hall testifying, they received word that their team had been laid off 
Instead of getting the chance to stay and celebrate the passage of their resolution, they instead need to leave to go retrieve their personal belongings from their office. According to an Austin City Council press release, many of the workers feel they could lose their homes due to sudden and unexpected layoff, which some of them believe could be retaliation for standing up today. So, speaking of, uh, did you see the Boeing? There's another Boeing whistleblower found dead, by the way. Um, so, you know, businesses going back to classic union crap, you know, go read up your union history. Um, so <clears throat> this article, the original article continues about the, uh, new firing. So earlier this month, the three of us, along with dozens of our coworkers took part in a co coordinated set of civil resistance actions at Google offices around the United States. Some workers occupied Google's New York offices. Others occupied the Sunnyvale, California office of Thomas Purian, the CEO of Google Cloud. This protest was an escalation of the ongoing No Tech for Apartheid. Again, I have the links in the description below. You can go to that article and click that little blue link right there. Uh, which has been demanding for years that Google and Amazon cancel Project Nimbus, a $1.2 billion deal the Google Cloud and Amazon Web Services signed with the Israeli military and government in 2021, and Amazon Web Services signed with the Israeli military and government in 2021. The contract provides cloud computing and AI tech for Israel's apartheid state, contributing to state violence, and now to Israel's genocide of Palestinians in Gaza. So that's what they were there doing. They were out there doing the do, protesting and whatnot. So. Uh, mm -hmm. here's unlimited L's on Twitter. Google fires at least 20 more of its employees at the anti-Israel protest, bringing the total number terminated to around 50. So that was, you know, two sets of them got fired. This comes after Google fired about 30 employees last week after the arrest of her protesting the company's offices. Google said it fired more employees after initial investigation, identified other staff members who used masks and didn't wear badges to hide their identity. Yes. Like smart people would. Um, right. So, like, here's, here's what happened. Yes. Google, Google, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. We charge you with genocide. No, Google, Google, you can't hide. No, Google, Google, you can't hide. You are funding genocide! Sundar, Sundar, you can't hide! Sundar, Sundar, you can't hide! We charge you with- I mean... Look familiar? Cops entering yeah. a building? Protesters? Yeah. Yeah. So... Who do you think- Where do you think these people graduated from, Care Bear? Uh, depending, uh, you could argue probably Ivy League schools. Um, but yeah, they're at high levels in the Google office, you know? Right. So you're talking Columbia, MIT, Yale. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, what are they doing right now at those places too? Um... Protesting. Yes. So I think that's why you're seeing a lot of press about these now, you know, and trying to paint them as crazy or that that sort of thing, right? Even though we know they're not. Uh I've seen them also saying that they're ignorant and just trying to get laid too, which is just hilarious. Ask one of them, <laughs> any of them, why are they there? You know, they'll tell you. So anyway, uh, this this article continues about what these protesters will tell you. This is literally them telling you, right? The day after the protest, we learned that Google had fired 30 of us, including those not actively part of the sit-in. The following Monday, we learned that Google fired an additional 20 workers, including non-participating bystanders. Google claims everyone fired had been directly involved in destructive activity but its leadership has yet to even provide an accurate count of the number of workers impacted by its retaliation. 
we have had to rely on a self-reported count from workers themselves. We are disappointed, outraged, and disheartened by Google's refusal to engage with us. What is what do those tactics sound like, Colin? Like innocent bystanders, you know, retaliation. I mean, right? It's it. it, it I. It's funny because I read. I forgot her name right now, but um, Colombia's president sent a statement. I think earlier this afternoon, basically saying, "I am so saddened by." We're we and we want the time to heal. We need to move forward and heal. Mm. Yeah, move forward and heal before last night when you essentially released the hounds on them and many of them from what I saw in you and just as an aside, like and Reef knows this because when I was prepping I was very distracted by <laughs> yeah. what was happening in Colombia. I could have finished prepping a lot sooner than I did, but I was just Stuck on watching going through clips it and, of, yeah. of what was happening in Colombia last night. Uh, you know, people like you know, and we know how the police acts, and now this president is like, I'm so sad. Like it's almost like that abusive like yeah, taunt of like, I'm sorry, like let's move forward after the person beats you up. Who's who's so, out there attacking people now? Groups in groups. Who's the ones doing that? Who were peaceful? Who wasn't? Yeah. You know. So, ugh. Anyway, um, yeah. So Google, of course, refusing to engage. Right. So they participated in this protest because we could see all too clearly how our day-to-day -day work at Google was aiding and abetting. Israel's ongoing genocide in Gaza. That's their first sentence. Right. Like, as tech workers, we see how Google, like Meta and other tech corporations, have engaged in double standards by allowing Zionists to promote atrocity propaganda while simultaneously suppressing Palestinian voices. Where's those free speech warriors at on them? Huh? Where are they at? Right. The pattern of censorship long predates the current war. We have been distressed to see our own they the link they got receipts. Like we have been distressed to see our own creativity, innovation, and love that technology be used for warfare. Very simple. Like Many of our co-workers asked to be reassigned to different projects or took leaves in feeble attempts to distance ourselves from Project Nimbus and other military contracts. We also tried to engage our leaders with petitions through office hour meetings, at company town halls, and through internal message boards and employee groups. So when you say they're not being listened to, clearly... What is what does Martin right. Luther King call the unheard? Like well, a riot is a language of the unheard. Uh, yes. So yeah, uh, th they've been trying to go through the normal channels. It looks like right. And I'll say this: I I was going to say something like that later. Actually, I think I tweeted that with somebody today. But when people see the despair and are doing everything within the normal channels of talking and like negotiating and like trying to distance yourself from the problem trying to actively fix it and then the powers that be or the people that have the means to stop it don't and for reasons we'll get to in the next segment then what do you think the response is going to be? You know, right. are they they will continue to sink by eye and just hope for the best? Or they're going to become more violent in terms of them being more desperate. And that's what we're seeing in Palestine. And I'm not condoning Hamas at all, but given the impression that 
you know, that the Palestinians have been going through for 75 plus years. Like, what did you expect was going to happen eventually? Yeah. So, so it's the idea of if you're not going to like, and I've said this many times, you know, there's a time when you can be cool and there's a time when you have to act a fool in order to get results. And right now, I think we're seeing the turning point, especially on these colleges' campuses right now, that they've done the cool thing. They've talked, they negotiated, they brought their demands and, you know, tried to talk to their administration or leaders to divest from Google, among mm -hmm. other places, you know, and they're basically like kick rocks. And meanwhile, B BB is threatening to start an invasion of Rafa, like basically any day now to kind of off the rest of the Palestinians that are in the camps right now. Yeah. So people are seeing and feeling the desperation and the people who are in power are basically turning their backs. So you can, I, I don't promote violence, but given like the disregard of human humanity, you know, that we're seeing in Gaza right now, it's understandable that people are going to level up their responses in order to get that attention. Yeah. No, I, I agree. <laughs> so Google, um, instead of engaging with them in good faith, their leadership evaded their concerns, targeted messages that expressed support for Palestine or opposition to the genocide, and censored their internal communications network. These actions have particularly impacted our Palestinian, Muslim, and Arab colleagues who are facing an internal culture of hate, abuse, and retaliation. Ultimately, we felt we had no choice but to band together and disrupt business, as usual, in order to make our demands heard. We'd like right. to reiterate those demands. First, Google must cancel its Project Nimbus contract. Look, we get demands, Colin. I like when people come prepared. Mm -hmm. So Project Nimbus contract immediately ceased doing business with the Israeli apartheid government and military. Second, Google must stop the harassment, intimidation, bullying, silencing, and censorship of Palestinian, Arab, and Muslim Googlers. Third, Google must address the health and safety crisis among Google workers. Multiple workers have quit citing the serious mental health consequences of working at a company that is using their labor to enable a genocide. And lastly, Google must stop the retaliation against and doxing of workers speaking out and create a safe working environment for all workers. Any any questions? I mean, how... I think inadvertently we have a theme tonight. It's the yeah. idea of... People making demands because they see, they know the implicity of their job or in costumes case, their money, well, their parents' money, uh, like for many of them, let's admit it. But still, you know, their money being used to implicitly fund genocide and people don't want to have anything of it. Yeah. So doing the, the thing that they should do is engage the people in power and basically being like, stop, you know, and Google is just basically like, shut up. And as Indy said in the chat, they're not canceling a $1.2 billion contract. This yeah. is about the bottom line. This is about Money. their paychecks. Right. Yeah. Which is why the only thing that's going to work is hurting these people's pocketbooks. Like, right. Which you have to do that more than $1.2 billion. You have to be worth more than that to these people. So, uh, you know, power to you. But, um, so... Since 2021, as Google workers with Noda, we have raised concerns about the potential surveillance and military use of our AI. In response, our leadership denied the military nature of Project Nimbus, claiming that the 
contract provides cloud computing for civilian purposes only. In November, Google CEO Sundar Pichai said he was proud to be doing Project Nimbus as a partner to like-minded governments to share democratic values around the world. Yet despite Google supposedly prohibiting using its tech for immediate harm, Israel is harnessing Google Photos facial recognition to create hit lists of Palestinians. Just a few weeks ago, the Times revealed that Google does, in fact, have a direct contract with the Israeli Ministry of Defense as part of an Israeli Nimbus deal. What's more, Time reported that the tech giant has negotiated deepening its partnership during Israel's war in Gaza. Clearly, our executives have blatantly lied to us as they continue to profit from the murder of over 30,000 Palestinians, again, that's way low-balled now, right? and the destruction of life in Gaza. <clears throat> the unprecedented scale of death and destruction in Gaza is enabled by tech companies like Google, dubbed the, first, the world's first AI war. Ongoing journalistic investigations about Gaza demonstrates how AI-powered target selection systems operate in tandem to profile Palestinian civilians as terrorists, select them as targets, and permit ruthless bombings against civilians as 972 Mag has reported, the gospel classifies buildings as military bases. Lavender and Where's Daddy identify and classify Palestinian civilians as terrorists under false pretenses and track their movements for target selection. The Israeli Ministry of Defense deploys automated decision systems deliberately to remove human deliberation. As one Israeli told 972, the machine did it totally. We, we talked about this, Gabriel. And you talked about this last week. Yes, so we did. Check out, check <laughs> our playlist for um. What what did you title that segment? Lavender AI. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So yeah, so that was last from last week. So you can either look at last week's stream or the clip to yeah. learn more about Project Lavender. So AI is one of today's weapons of mass destruction, and Google is a willing war profiteer. Systems like the Gospel of Lavender are made possible through the kind of cloud computing infrastructure that companies like Google, AWS, and Intel provide. These technologies, initially used to enforce violent occupation, apartheid, and genocide law, found a lucrative global market stretching far beyond the confines of Palestine, right? Cybersecurity experts at the Tor Project. Um, we proudly participate in this sit-in as Google workers who believe in the power of collectively worker-led disruption of labor in the workplace for Palestinian liberation, anti-discrimination, and anti-repression. We redress complicity and silence amid Google's pursuit of profit at the expense of human lives. We demand the technological products of our labor not be sold to the Israeli military as it commits a genocide against the Palestinian people and that none of our technology be used to harm, oppress, surveil, kill people. In more demands, I, I like that. Um, we are not alone in experiencing retaliation. We stand in unwavering solidarity with workers and students everywhere who also see how powerful institutions like academia, journalism, and more aid and abet the attack on Palestinian lives. The repression we face here among healthcare workers, students, journalists, and tech workers who are speaking out in, is nothing in comparison to the daily live experiences of Palestinians at this moment. We call on all Google, Amazon, and tech workers to join the No Tech for Apartheid campaign and build power with us to demand our bosses divest from Israel's genocide of Palestinians. As code becomes tantamount to weaponry, this call could not be more urgent. So. Essentially, what they're saying to do to Google is things like San Francisco does to Google uh, mapping cars. You know? Right. Like, like, like this. Yay! Um, but anyway, um, thoughts before we head out of here? Oh, um,. This also leads me to my later story tonight about FISA stuff and how mm. our own governments will be doing that, not just Israel's. So, you know, stay tuned for that. But, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't have anything more to say other than I think 
I'm actually glad that you brought this story because this kind of show, and I mean, I know you talk about this more extensively with Indy on how you missed that in terms, you know, unions, you know, doing this. But I think now what we're beginning to see is more private institutions now standing up for themselves and feeling the wrath of the powers that be in those institutions, basically saying kick rocks. And people are beginning to fight back and show their teeth in terms of, well, and I think in this case, given what's happening in Gaza, people do not want to be complicit in what's happening there. So, you know, uh, we're going to go a little bit more about divestment in its upcoming segment. But it's the idea, like, these large companies, for all intents and purposes, do not necessarily have to invest in the industries that they're investing in. Uh, Google is worth how much money? Like, I don't even want to know. But yeah. you, it's not like a billion dollar less, I'm just going to say, is going to hurt them any. You know, but... But who will get hurt are Palestinians right now um, who are just hanging by a thread. And then ultimately, it comes back to us in terms of these are technologies that could be used for us. And in, like we saw today, you know, that and it's just so funny how our government when it comes to social issues like universal health care or housing or education, fill in the blank, that they will take their sweet ass time to actually try and get something done and they more or less disagree. But we're seeing with Israel, you know, they put in a bill regarding anti Semitism, you know, like how fast did that happen? Like immediately. A minute? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, that happened within days that they were able to, at least in the House, pass that bill. So it's just the priorities of who these people stand for. And yeah, as you said, it's money. They do mm. not want to get rid of their bottom line. They want to essentially enrich themselves at the detriment of the people who work under them. And people are not standing for it anymore. Well, speaking of money that Google shouldn't have, they shouldn't have your money. So go to codashv.com slash Indie News Network and give us your money instead. Um, we'll take that, you know, scan that QR code on your screen or put exclamation mark donate in the chat. Um, you can help not support YouTube by doing so. Um, and if you can't do that, you can just share. I'm sure YouTube will love to censor this video. Um, so like and subscribe, hit share, comment, you know, but while you still can, um, you know, and YouTube, let us know what part you think is actually misinformation. Timestamp it like you do your copyright strikes. 